Hello there, everyone, and thank you for rejoining me, of course, here in Old World Blues, in which we're playing as the Enclave. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, but the Brahmin Barons and Vault City Strike Suffrage. Suffrage. As it turns out, to some Americans, the democracy is negotiable. Vault City and parts of Northern California are trying to restrict the right to vote to a long time inhabitants are requiring arcane citizenship tests. Their opposite to control who their dis districts send to Congress and keep the unwashed masses from having a say. They're all terrible people. Or just let me explain that why that's illegal. Because you implemented the Voting Rights Act, or then I can't play, play these little games and common sympathizer in the press. Grant has begun to suspect one of the more outspoken press critics of being a communist in light of her opposition huh, to Grant's proposed plan for a national base, baseball league. Grant is considered merely condemning her or asking the Secret Service to investigate whether her opposition to government sponsored sporting events is a sign of imminent or a sign of communist and sympathies. That don't sound like communism to me. Only a communist would oppose baseball. Uh, uh, just for the role-playing aspect, the RP for this, we're going to go with that one. Americans win it all, of course, we're doing. And we're going to complete integration for now. And we're still over the waste, of course. And I might just reload the game save, but, you know, whatever it is. It is what it is. So, please focus rejection means. I want to reject them. I like rejecting things. Bonus is doubled both groups are rejected. Pest control, I think that's right, but... <sighs> except ghouls, this hurts me on the inside a little bit. We can accept ghouls, but reject super mutants. Contrary to popular belief, not all ghouls are feral. Many of them are just like the rest of us. People struggle struggling to thrive in the unforgiven wastes. Some are old enough to remember when America was a country, not a wasteland. Let us reach our hand and invite them out to help us rebuild what they once knew. Also, I will probably end up doing a Pierce run again sometime. Um, I don't know. I don't think I've done it in this mod. In this version. Yeah, definitely not, I've definitely not done it in this mod yet. So, Look at that manpower. Oh my god. That's a crud ton of manpower. Do we need more? No, oh, Combat's looking pretty good. Not going to lie. Not super worried about it. So... We can close out of this one, close out of this one. Oh, actually. Yeah, actually, we'll keep that one open. For now, Legion Marches, of course, could boost the civilian economy. Not gonna do that, of course. Could get. Do, oh, wow. Ah, Frumentarius. Frumentarius defects. As America wakes from the slumber, the wasteland begins to rally to a cause. A former member of the Legion was spared, or appeared, in Reno, asking to join our army. He's taken the name Ulysses after a great soldier fought to the United America under one flag. And vows that when he sets his flag down, it'll be over his body or a nation he believes in. Who are you that you do not know your own history? Oh, we could take up those, those two. Ban free press? I still want to do that, though. I still want to do that. Ah. Oh, well. Ah, let's go that one. Nice. What do we got here? Cool, why not? And we should have this one done, too. Cool marriage. Sometimes it's sad to recognize ghouls as U.S. citizens and odd solutions, situations come up. Oislander, uh, from New Reno, demand we recognize his marriage to a ghoul. Although we don't interfere with, with what consenting adults do in their bedrooms and really don't want to know what these two do in theirs, they have brought a challenge to the new Supreme Court to hit the constitutional challenge. Although one justice asked whether this is a priority in this grim post-nuclear wasteland, another member of the court argued that civil rights are always important. The court has three options before. The first is to say that we find ghoul marriage gross and we can deny rights to Americans based on our dislikes as long as they are in prison and are executing people. So we can take uh, note that the 14th Amendment guarantees all U.S. citizens uh, the equal protection of the law. Uh, let's see. Um, and the rule that banning ghoul marriage violates equal protection clause. Or we can issue a rambling decision that doesn't give anyone a clear quote, standard to follow in future cases, but let's say love is love and get a quarter to weddings. Adam and Eve, not Adam and Eve. That was equal protection. Argument. Let's go with the decision crafted to be used at weddings. Well, this doesn't do anything. I don't like any of oh, I'll go with that one. Screw it. Behold, the United States are holding the first free elections in over 200 years. Of course, only eligible citizens of America can vote. Nice. Yeah, a little stability. Let's that one. This guy just found nothing. Get out of my office, of course. Of course, we've got to do some vaccinations too. Marine Corps at 29 Palms. The largest Marine Corps base in the former United States. Officially, the Marine Corps Air Ground Combat Center. The center was the largest desert warfare training center, larger than the National Training Center up in Fort Irwin. It was here that the Marines trained for the spirit in the Gobi Desert, and it was here that China's back was broken when the Marine units broke through Chinese lines, secured vital Chinese factories in the Gobi for Uncle Sam. Open a second front for Chinese liberation. The NCR used the main base as its headquarters for their push south. The many NCR Rangers passed through here for initial training before heading off to, uh, to the Baja or the Mojave. There's a lot more than 29 palms here. A lot more. At least we continue to march, huh? That's nice. 
Whispers of hope. Despite our current precarious position, there are those who are taking our to our American dream. Whispers of a new dawn are spoken with no one see our loyalists in the room. A source of a president who can sway even his bitter enemies with words and his uncorruptible soul. Ask now what your government can do for you. I need you for the U.S. Army. Well, sure, why not? Cool. Further restore traps Air Force Base. Uh, well. Oh, not good. Well, I think the time's come. Sooner than I thought. Right now. So this entire front has to be managed. Good luck. Don't die. And then, so we got those there. And the, I'm going to be realistic. Uh, it's going to be real. It's going to be a little tough. Um, the Legion. I'll throw you up here. I was going to throw a lot of enemies at us. I'm actually going to probably split you. I'll we'll split five off. Because. Legion's going to be throwing in divisions and naval invading us like there's no tomorrow. So I want to park U5 like here-ish. Maybe. I see all can't need to go there. It would probably be easiest if we just like could just like fair drop, which we probably can do, but still. Now they get the claims and a war goal against us, which ain't good. So if that's the case, I want to keep doing that, but we're going to be running out of time, so we got to do this, and we got to get a little bit of superiority, you know, all the good stuff. Where did you march us? Someone should stop them. Chain choir. Oh, they keep going this way. Ah, see? It's not for Ben Lubbock, you need Austin. Because in the end, okay, these guys pieced out. The real fact I thought was fighting them. That's above the Oh, sh Nikes. All right, so many days we got left. What are we missing here? Heavy artillery and huh? So we need a lot more of these. Makes sense. There we go. Free elections, that'll help us out. Enclave Born, which I like, but... Uh, this one, yeah. Nation Reborn. The quote of the classical musician Hamilton. Fly on the field. We've had quite a run. Reform path. We get the job done. New flagstaff, huh? That's kind of cool. Alright, so now we're actually making stuff here, which is fine. Now, show information infrastructure. Beside a net enclave net and Rob Comal, uh, or male, the heart of information networks that have survived the great, still, great war still operate in the waste, accessed by scavengers and fools. One of our scientists has stated the network in the get-go and promised a radical plan to link all the computers together, creating a natural information infrastructure, and we could listen to all of it with enemies unaware. Listen to words and to keep you safe. Guess that's scientific applications. Oh. That's real busted. I like this one. But six? Six seems to be overdoing it. And I want to overdo it. Cool. Goals in the army. The allowance of goals is full. Productive citizens of America, there's been a question raised among a military command of allowing them to serve in the army. On the one hand, they have hundreds of years of survival experience, and a few of them are former soldiers themselves. On the other hand, there's a lingering risk of one or more of them turning feral. And a feral ghoul in power armor is a dangerous creature. This camp is advocating for segregated battalions of ghoul infantry, even run by ghoul officers. There would be more puritanical voices among us, but we did kill most of them. The debate is reaching, reaching a fever pitch, but the president's voice carries weight beyond measure. Prepare, prepare for orderly integration. It works for Truman, it works for me. Access legitimacy is converted into base stability. Give them separate formations. No need any of them going feral. Cool civilization. Fine. We'll go with it. Elko Posse, really. And 
restore further al Alameda Point. A combination of uh, three naval solutions in San Francisco, used by the sheep for the longest time, they are now ready to raise the banner of freedom overhead once again. Nice. After two hundred years of chaos, depravity, and barbarism, the American flag flies once more over this great country. Terms like enclave are quietly phased out of use as the blue enclave flags are replaced with the star spangled banners of old. There's so much work to be done and many enemies to bring to heel, but the claim of the enclave has been realized America's back. God bless the US of A. Cool. Last arguments of the president. Uh, new economic policy. Oh, that would be Chamber of Commerce. That'd be good. Sophisticated industry. Ooh. Yeah, that stuff would all be very good. Where are we for the economy? We're okay. It's not great. Consumer goods, my god. My lord. Oh, we gotta do vaccinations no matter what anyway, so. We're collapsed. Ah, oh, America's capital. The restoration of America. Oh, we need to revive the Federal Reserve next. Uh, it sounded, I decided we would replace our capital. Some suggest we move to Shady Sands, the large city of California, but others, fearful of the threat of protests and, dis and dissidents, suggest we fortify Navarro. But there's a third idea Shady Sands, Navarro. New Reno will do until we free Washington. That's right. Please rise for the national anthem, and we'll see if you ever get out to the East Coast. Or get there. Supreme Court Justice, Mr. President. Astonishing news. Gould's appeared in New Reno, who claims to be a surviving member of the U.S. Supreme Court. He says he was on a ski trip to Colorado when the Great War broke out and spent the last 200 years traveling the west and administering justice. We were skeptical, especially when he asked for his name, which is Saul Goldman, of course. We doubt anyone was named that pre-war, but he claims it's a post-war name. And his real name is Robert McGill, of course. We'll look through what records we have, but the calendar checks out. And storing him to the Supreme Court could be a big step towards reviving America's legal system. Hope he gets hired, or hope he hires good law clerks. I really doubt an octogenarian judge survived nuclear war. Uh, the United States is strong enough to pursue something unheard of since the Great War, a monetary policy. Ooh, man to the U.S. dollar. We force people to adopt the U.S. dollar instead of the NCR dollar. We can impoverish the elite over now and purchase their assets with a new currency or accept the NCR dollar. Ooh. Given that New California's a motor of the waste on economy, we can peg the NCR dollar to the U.S. dollar. I like this one more, and I want this one, but... This one gives us people support, so... And after that one... Oh, United States, United States of America. We'll get there. What is this one? Navarro Naval Annex. The Navy wants to set up a series of dry docks and shipyards at the base, although so first it'll install a barracks from which our sailors can live. Navarro Army Barracks. As the base expands, we need appropriate facilities to house our soldiers in Navarro Airfields. What was once a singular vertebrate pad, the Air Force tends to expand into a sprawling airfield capable of supporting operations in Northern California and the Northwest. And yeah, lost arguments of presidents. Although most nuclear missiles were used in the Great War, we've been getting more signals near Ashland that some suggest. Uh, some of our pre-war weapons are still around. Truth of the Enclave. Since our takeover of the NCR, there have been a string of rumors, conspiracy theories, and fringe speculation of what exactly was the purpose of the Enclave. That's going to go from before the war, and they'll tell you how the government was back then. So it begs the question as to what exactly the Enclave, a descendant of this pre-war policy state, is trying to do. The hopeful and somewhat naive claim that the Enclave is here to restore democracy and the American ideals. The cynical claim that they were here to wipe out everyone they considered a mutant. Of course, the only highest and oldest echelons of the Enclave know the answer, and with Grant at the helm, that very answer is to be addressed. Some idealists suggested we air out our dirty laundry about that time, President Richardson tried to kill all mutants, but really, why bother? Do Americans have a right to know, or is the ignorance truly bliss? The Enclave is devoted to saving America, which I prefer this one. But the truth says free. Well, that's the worst that could happen. This is going to destroy us. Because I've done this before, and it's very difficult to come back. But we're going to try it. Educating children about education. Douglas was warned about the threat of communism in his youth, and warned American, and a warned Americans worth too. Should we pass these lessons on to America's children? America's youth be warned of the co evils of communism. Let the adults worry about these things. Truth hurts. As our citizens woke up on that fateful day, preparing for their daily routine, none expected what the day would have entailed by nightfall. The whole country was in a panic over the president's revelation. At approximately 10 in the morning, radio services everywhere were interrupted by a special broadcast from the president himself. The president calmly revealed the truth of the Enclave's crimes, method, method, uh, method, uh, listing down all the atrocities of the Richardson administration. The list of the crimes was so long that the broadcast was over just before noon. But the most notable one was a plan to use FEV Curling 13 to kill off almost all of the wasteland. Shortly after the broadcast, all heck broke loose. The Declaration of Independence states that governments derive the powers from the consent of the government, but what happens when the government revokes the consent? <clears throat> People take to the streets, protesting an illegitimate government. Panic sets in over the fear of FEV curling 13, unleashed on the population. Stores were emptied as panic buying set in, as people feared martial law. Californians in the army deserted their posts, unwilling to fight for an illegitimate government. The unions of Shady Sands announced a strike. 
First part, granted, never expected the response to be this severe, but here we are now. As for as the Constitution says, that whatever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it's the right of the people to alter or abolish it. New California Economic Policy Now that we've re-established Federal Reserve, there's some debate about the New California's currency. We have to declare the NCR to be dollar to be worthless. We can bankrupt some of our greatest foes and distribute the assets to the uncles, friends, and comrades. We're going to allow people to convert their NCR currency into American dollars, ensuring an orderly transition. Not for an orderly transition, of course. Chamber of Commerce. Chamber of Commerce can promote trade and economic development to the American economy together. I'm just going to jump over there because we need to get out of that. We're still building this up here, which is good. Get more cores. The Great Race, of course. The Race to Remember. As these people want to come kill us. You know, it, it, just normal stuff, you know. I like more rapid response divisions, but um, we're making the Japanese ones. Twice and two lifetimes, there you go. California ghouls. California's always had a significant ghoul population, mostly concentrated in the necropolis and Daeglo. As news of the Prince's revelation spread across the country, the ghoul community responds. In contrast to the panic among their smooth-skinned peers, the ghouls have been remarkably calm, probably because they've been here before. When it first rolled into California, the ghouls expected uh, to be unceremoniously put down instead. Uh, they found the rights to try in the Constitution even better. Uh, townships are now banned from pulling a vault city and expelling the ghouls over for arbitrary reasons. Therefore, it's no surprise that they're more willing to give us a chance. Guess our car good karma's paying off. Well, for now. Found expedition. Always good. And there you go. Skies over California, once a vital component of the Air Mobility Command. Uh, the resource wars change everything. With long-range bombers and submarines launched aircraft, the Travis Air Force Base was in a perfect position to combat the rapidly escalating Pacific Air War. While bases like Mount Home and MacArthur handled strikes coming out of Af Alaska, Travis sent fighters of the Pacific. Coordinating with the Navy, the fighters of the Travis kept the skies over America's Pacific shores clear, and as such, it was targeted heavily by the Chinese. It's ironic that the descendants of the Chinese, as she managed to restore the base in working condition, though the stars and stripes flies, however, the base once warm. Fly, dragons fly? Further store NAF El Centro. Sitting just north of Mexico, uh, NAF El Centro is crucial to control the skies above the Gulf of California, a strategic location for further strikes against Kaiser. Protecting the Golden Gate to America. Combination of Air Naval Station uh, Alameda, Naval, Treasure Island Naval Base, and the Hunters Point Naval Shipyards, despite its large size, remain more a defense position, services in the fleet before they move north to Kitsap, or south to San Diego. The creation of this base was a strategic production of Sacramento and the San Joaquin, Joaquin Estuary, and even today the base still serves a purpose. After the war, she, the sheep cleared out of the defenders and managed to turn the various parts of the base over to their own naval production. That's how we managed to take notes of the sheep, which is very unfortunate for the sheep, and so very fortunate for us. Our engineers and Navy C, uh, bees are still coming across the telltale marks of her sabotage efforts to ensure that she never left San Francisco by water. The base is now operational again and is becoming a central point for the anti-pirate operations within the estuary and further abroad in the Pacific. How did a Chinese submarine get this close? Accusations of Congress. Oh boy. The recent revelations have not only stirred up people, but also of Congress. While everyone is in agreement over the validity of the war crimes, they are also in disagreement over just how high the orders originated and how to respond to the situation. The ex pierce reformers pushed back against the president, claiming the enclave's war crimes were the responsibility of an extremist clique, rather than the President Richardson himself. Many of them still respect President Richardson, and do not take slandering their martyr's name lightly. The more delicate or dedicated reformers, on the other hand, demand a full inquiry into the crimes of the enclave and compensate the victims to punish those responsible. Seeing the debate going nowhere, Forrest needs decided to step in. Forrest was one of the grandest early supporters back at the Sierra Army Depot and a staunch proponent of democracy. Forrest suggested having an independent commission formed to uncover the truth. From there, the commission can develop an action plan to help us reconcile their population. Although many did not agree with him initially, Granite was more interested, interested in his solution. The president, whether by charisma or ruthlessness, managed to convince Congress to pass a motion. Democracy in, ash, in action. Three bottle caps, that'd be nice for more uh, goods and whatnot. Department of Education. Uh, political power would be okay. We don't really need it. Yeah, NCR leadership. Electrons to serve, huh? We got so many we could do. Meeting Bill Calhoun. 1,500 years ago, everyone knew that the Earth was the center of the universe. 600 years ago, everyone knew the Earth was flat. 200 years ago, we knew the communism was evil. 15 minutes ago, we know that the enclave was only here to help. Just imagine what we're going to find out tomorrow, says Bill Calhoun. With the creation of the Truth Commission, based on several new challenges, the Commission must be unbiased as possible to give a valid judgment. Also, to maintain an aura of legitimacy, we cannot have it under our government control. We need to find a chairperson who will uphold these ideals. So far, one person fits the criteria perfectly. 
Bill Calhoun is known as a man of strong moral character. Even within the followers of the apocalypse, ashamed over his role in co founding Khazar's Legion, he lives a quiet, secluded life doing his good deeds. Perhaps I'll atone for his past, now when you convince him to leave the commission. Granite went to meet pa uh, Calhoun personally to convince him to leave the commission. Well, Calhoun was the resident initially. Grant was able to convince him to serve his nation. Welcome aboard, Bill Calhoun. To whom will lead the base? As our work expands, the branches we are, start are starting to argue over what exactly shall be the name of the base. Restore Navarro underground. Underneath uh, <coughs> Navarro was a small complex of offices and research labs. Many were caved in when the NCR and Brotherhood oh, fought over the base. We should make careful preparations for the excavation. Communist schools? Grants of anti-communist diatribes become subject of discussion. It appears that one of the pre-war ghouls, a librarian before the war, has offered to speak with Grant and explain communism to him. She's asked Grant to read a book called Das Kapital, which says it was, well, was a communist work. Let's read it. Arrest a goal for owning communist propaganda. Better read. Grant gave up on Das Kapital after the first few pages, finding it incredibly tedious and completely incomprehensible to someone raised 30 years after a nuclear war. Still, at least he decided that simply un American to oppose baseball, but not a sign of communist sympathies. Okay, let's call it a whim. <clears throat> Calhoun Commission Follower Inquiry. Followers are renowned for their impartiality. It's no surprise that the Commission membership will be composed of the followers. However, uh, some members of Congress propose that an observer body composed of government officials as oversight. While well, observers are prohibited from directly interfering with the Commission, that does not mean that they cannot use more subtle means of influence, after all. Isn't it good to forge new friendships outside of working hours? Alternatively, we can just trust uh, the followers to do a good job themselves. They do have a good track record, after all. Evidence system, no. With the commission underway, we now have a choice. Should we let them work unimpeded? While that seems to be an obvious choice, it's likely they'll come to a conclusion that does not benefit us. Alternatively, we could tend to uh, suddenly steer the commission down a path that favors us, after all. A result that absolves us from guilt will benefit us greatly. We we'll have three, including this one, opportunities to allow or hinder the commission to do the work. Our choices will have consequences. Let the followers do the job. It's a little drink between friends. <clears throat> I'm here to destroy ourselves. Marcus's speech. While well, California is in chaos, as the president's words on the enclave crimes echo across the land, the super mutants of California react. One of the leaders, by the name of Marcus, has made a speech calling all super mutants to resist us. These new governments, they think they've got all the answers. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Been there to see now. Got the scars. And this one uh, is no different. Yes, this NCR was not perfect, but they did at least try to improve it a lot. But now, I see super mutants homeless on the streets, begging for cabs. And those are the lucky ones. Many more of my brothers and sisters have been rounded up and shipped out to God knows where, as much as I hate to say it. We're not dealing with something that I can be reasoned with. Only our hope of salvation is by force of arms. <laughs> I guess Tabitha was right for once. Darn you, Marcus. Darn it, darn it, darn it. I was doing Chamber of Commerce, of course, right now, too. And... Uh, which one next? Yeah. Uh, protecting was once the city of Los Angeles. Edward Air Force Base took hit after hit during the Great War, nearly reducing it to a pile of rubble. Thankfully, the fallout kept scavengers from picking the base apart. And what's more, when the fallout subsided... <clears throat> The NCR turned into the center of the Air Force, make, which, while laughable, restored some parts of the base to work in order, making our job all the easier, allowing us to divert resources to improving the base's facilities, creating a model of air bases to, as we continue east. The Air Force has expressed its desire and willingness to up begin operations, especially since the base is a strategic location in California, making it a prime point for an eventual war with Kaiser. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, Navarro Archives. Navarro contained the largest archives um, of enclave historical documents, some dating even back before the Great War. Located in the deepest, most protected part of the fortress, it's unsurprising the NCR ever got a hold of the documents. Now the Commission is requesting access to the enclave, enclave archives at Navarro. While conducting another request, it will arouse too much suspicion. It'll be a few days before they arrive. We can destroy some of the more incriminating documents before Calhoun and his team arrives. Destroy sensitive documents? Um, Great Bear. Yeah, we gotta go this one. Here we got that next up. No. Nice. How do we have twenty five? Huh. A royal expedition, one of the Uncle's more heinous acts, was kidnapping of wastelanders to be experimented on. The most notable incident is kidnapping of Vault 13 in the royal residence. So did the chosen ones to solve the rig. The outcome, as we all know, is the destruction of the rig and the death of the president and the most of the Enclave leadership. The Vault 13 and the royal survivors were returned to a royal. Or returned to a royal. Members of the commission are interested in interviewing the residents of the royal, particularly the older ones who remember their time in captivity. 
Needless to say, but such evidence will be extremely damning for us. The caravan stopped by a new arena for the night. Perhaps they're also looking for evidence of our past dealings with the South Torres. Regardless, it would not be out of the ordinary for them to suffer a mob hit outside New Reno. I kind of want to see what happens here. No collapse trade is not good. Free trade. There you go. That should definitely help us out. Yeah, there you go. Nice. More enough resources for our war machines. Should help us out a little more. There's a to fall silent. Oh. The big circle is often considered to be the most lucrative trade route in the West, reaching from Oregon down to the Mojave, yet for many years. The Esmeralda Valley directly to the south has often been too dangerous for traders to pass through on account of unceasing conflict, that is, until now. Curies and caravans report that Esmeralda has fallen silent, finally unified under the banner of a group known as the Guardians, what this means for the region is uncertain, but many are wary of their ambitions. Of all the groups that fought to claim Esmeralda, the reclusive and hostile Guardians were the only one that people knew about the least. Hidden away in the Citadel, they now exert the control over the Terra Earth, seizing technology and turning away all that they consider a threat. Little is known about their plans, though some claim to have seen a vertebrate from the west fly towards their base. Rumor has it they seek to protect some lost trove of technology, while others say they will be they're in league with the Brotherhood in California. Only tell and tell what they plan concerning. Um, Nuclear lands opening day. After year of construction, Nuclear lands opened to rave reviews and would be crushing competition if there's any other theme park in the wastes. Casualties from Deathclaw petting zoos are within acceptable parameters. The haunted house's feral ghouls provide excellent military training and rocket roller coasters fun. For one brief day, American citizens get a taste of what our nation will be like when we finish rebuilding. Just obey park security. Cutting in line is unpleasant consequences. Oh, nice. Hey, that's even better now for us. Not great, but still. Let's argue against the presidents. Um, although some nuclear missiles were uh, used in the Great War, we've been getting some signals near Ashton that suggest some of our pre-war weapons are still found around. Closing the Calhoun Commission. <clears throat> Calhoun stood there before the assembly. The president, cabinet, congress, journalists all stared at him. He never felt this nervous since his days with Edward Salo, but he had a duty to carry out. I, William Calhoun, solemnly swear that everything I hear I say is the truth. The commission. <clears throat> Has reviewed all available evidence, and we have come to a consensus on the matter that hand on the path of commission. I report that the enclave in the pre-war United States committed crimes against humanity. Calhoun proceeded to systematically list all evidence of crimes the commission collected. So were so horrifying that audience members fainted or broke into tears. The atrocities ranged from pre-war concentration camps for Chinese Americans, Mariposa FEV experiments, to village massacres by the vertebrates. The most significant result was the crime of the enclave went up to the highest level, including President Richard himself. Some congressmen attempted to shout down Calhoun for insulting their martyr, but they were removed by security. The whole affair lasted through the whole day. By 7 p.m., Calhoun reached the closing part of the report in his closing speech. Calhoun said that whatever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it's the right of the people to alter or abolish it and to initiate or institute new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form. As to them, it shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Calhoun followed up with a statement with listing possible actions the government should carry out to make amends for the past, which would later be known as the Reparations Act. Throughout the entire ordeal, Grant felt a burning hatred for his predecessors, especially President Richardson, the men who portrayed the very ideals, ideals of America. Grant felt vindicated that he had revealed the crimes of the Enclave, but it was up to him now to fix his predecessors' mistakes. We bear the sins of our past. Yeah. I wanted to see what that was like. I lied at the end of the tunnel. We brace ourselves for another wave of unrest following the Calhoun Commission results. However, it was only sporadic at best. Perhaps it was because of the exhaustion over uh, <clears throat> the previous round, or because they now know we're not going to kill them, as we did not when President Granite first broke the news. Maybe because the Commission absolved President Granite of wrongdoing. After all, Granite was just a little boy in a royal when Navarro fell, similar to Arcade Gannon of the prominent reformers. Regardless, none can deny the air of unease across America. People are afraid to express themselves in public. Co workers refusing to share personal information out of fear the other may be a government of spook. Families peer out of the windows at night, watching for out for jackboot thugs uh, to kidnap the children. It is as if people are afraid of their government. In order to gain the trust of our citizens, we need to make amends for our past. And so today, Congress has passed the Reparations Act aiming at making amends for our past sins. The President is expected to sign a law later today. The Act contains provisions for war crime tribunals, reparations, and other measures as recommended by the Calhoun Commission, however. Uh, critics point out that the wrong wording of the Act suggests that these measures may be optional. It remains to be seen how thorough the Reparations Act will be. We must make amends for the past. Let's go look at it. Why not? 
Where the complete uh, truth of the Enclave's past uh, atrocities out now is up to uh, us to answer for the sins of our fathers. The Reparations Act contains re provisions for reparations to those affected by the Enclave, as well as bringing those responsible to justice. The President's prompt sweeping acts within a year to make amends for the, post, for the past. The strength of the Reparations Act will determine the outcome and whether our people's faith in the government is restored. However, during the right, doing the right thing can be costly and it may be easier to make empty promises. Skies above the California Co Gulf. Sitting just above the former U.S.-Mexican border, NAS El Centro is positioned just strategically enough to conduct patrols over the Gulf of California and strikes southwest of New Mexico against the Lock and the Suns, or further east against the Legion. Further, the base is home to a suite of virtual ready to reality pods that were used to train pilots when ordnance was scarce in the lead up to the Great War. <clears throat> Our teams have managed to get them running, allowing for naval and air force aviators to train in bombing strikes from the safety and comfort of the base. Fly, Eagles, fly! Nice, so let's take a look at this reparation stuff. Countdown. You cannot manually select this decision. You need to wait for the time to expire to get the ending, which depends on how strong the Reparations Act is. Composition of Victims The Reparations Act, victim of Voltec and the Enclave. In accordance with the Reparations Act passed by Congress, all persons who have suffered under by Voltec experiments, whether pre war or post war, are to be entitled to the following 1. Psychological A by a medically licensed psychologist. 2. A descendant of military personnel or former personnel, if ghoul or assumed from pre war, to be paid 1200 US dollars, as well as given the benefits owed in accordance with the GI Act of 2057. 3. A ghoul or mutated suit mutant for the vaults to be compensated with $20,000 US dollars directly with a natural stipend of $5 US dollars daily. Any persons who enter the experiments, whether they be hero, overseer, or security, are given to be given a presidential medal for the push to not let logic dictate emotions and vice versa, for being able to do the right thing. These persons are also compensated a variety of a varied amount depending upon their actions in the line of duty to end the vault experiments. 5. Any persons directly affected by former enclave san uh, sanctioned experiments or military Activity are to be compensated with $1,500 US dollars. In addition to such reparations, funding set aside by the Congressional Budgeting Commission or Committee is to be used to build a memorial in the city of the Boneyard in honor of those who suffered and lost their lives of experiments. With each and every vault to become a federally funded museum to warn the, uh, the horrors of pre war. No, credit for this event goes to Sergeant Major Eddie Fox. Well, at least we can do. The strength of the Reparations Act will give debuffs to consumer goods and factories in caps and come. The sway of granite, the act dies on the floor. Trial of vertebrate pilots. I was just following orders of phrase repeated uncountable times during the trial of vertebrate pilots. There's a reason why. Wastelanders once feared the sight of vertebrates in uh, the sky. Their speed and firepower uh, allowed them to obliterate entire villages within minutes. It's no surprise that the bulk um, of the enclave's atrocities were committed by vertebrates and by extension the pilots. As part of the Reparations Act efforts, we shall have organized a war crimes tribunal for vertebrate pilots. Should they ever be found guilty? Well, bring ease to our assistance, knowing that justice will be done even decades later. However, these pilots have valuable knowledge will be lost if a prisoner or executed. Just following orders is no excuse. We want human pilots, not heartless robots. Guilty pilots. We need their knowledge. Environmental arsenal. Drug dock. Mm. Since of our fathers, straight on the border between California and the Mojave. Our two prosperous trading towns, Ash and Hopeville. These two small towns have boomed in recent years thanks to civilization's recovery and are already on our list to deliberate to amplify, simplify logistics, if nothing else. But recently we picked up some sort of signals from pre-war military bases in the region. Since the area was home to ICBM bases before the war, we should secure the towns and investigate. ICBMs, you say? And see our leadership. With malice towards the with charity for all, with the firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right, uh, let's drive on to finish the work we are in and bind up the nation's wound or, or not. You know, we don't have to, but... We're working towards that way, so we might as well. <clears throat> Investigate the general staff. Uh, well, the, while the dead tell no tales, they do have living relatives. In the aftermath of the Calhoun Commission, many of them are coming forward demanding monetary reparations for the unjustly slain relatives. Considering our non-discriminatory targeting, the sum we have to pay will burn a hole in our budget. Or we can uh, just token, offer token compensation instead. Although they will not be happy over it. So it goes. Get a lot of money every month, so I'm not super worried about it. Incorporate the NCR Army. California's men and women can, with proper inducement, be persuaded to fight for America, those whom are worth saving anyway. Every artillery is doing better, though. I will give us that.
rule in California. Now the dust raised by the fall of the NCR is settling, the time's coming to debate uh, or decide how to uh, <clears throat> govern the newly liberated California lands. Grant C. Hayes, previously mayor of, Day of Dayclo and of the NCR, has asked an audience with Douglas Granite. He claims to be a descendant of enclave members who escaped Navarro and integrated into the NCR. Hayes believes we should appoint him to, uh, to a top position or reconstruction authority and bar anyone who took up arms against us from office. Many of our older off enclave officers balk at the idea of working with our old enemies and demand that any NCR politicians we come across be executed. Integrate them. As Lincoln said, do not destroy my enemies, we're going to make them friends. The ex-NCR leadership, selected by Hayes, are restored to the former positions, the few that haven't fled a long time ago at least. Several advisors of the NCR will become available to us, just to integrate the NCR leaders. I like this one the most. Do I not destroy my enemies when I make them ash? Jacob Dwemer Freeman outraged. One of our commanders, Jacob Dwemer Freeman, has approached Douglas Grant personally after a recent decision to accept NCR leadership and a government. Aggravated, but respectfully told the president they cannot accept working together with the people who ordered the attack on Navarro that killed his father. He has offered his resignation, feeling they can no longer perform his duties under the current administration. Accept his resignation. None of us are Americans until we all are. Uh. Ooh, let's take a look, see. He's convinced! Oh man, we actually got him back. It appears that he has retracted his resignation after being invited to a lengthy conversation by the American values with the president himself. Matters not where we stood 40 years ago. So I'll say it matters, but the reparations by Sanders scientists. While the FEV scientists have been executed as part of the purge of the purists, there are many other veteran scientists still under payroll. These scientists were not involved in FEV research, but knew of it and did nothing to stop it. While they were not guilty for any criminal offense, a Cowan Commission reportedly blasted them for uh, moral cowardice and suggested their employment be terminated. However, firing their veteran scientists would go and kneecap their research capabilities for some time. Fire them? Send them to the trial? Need their talents. Uh, war criminals and the general staff. I was ordered to go in there and destroy the mutants. That was my job on that day and the mission I was given. I did not sit down and think in terms of men, women, and children. They're all classified the same, Orion Moreno's trial. Shock news has hit our army. An ex-soldier going by the name of Cannibal Johnson and a former NCR t ranger turned U.S. Marshal by the call sign or uh, uh, Aquamarine have released an expose implicating numerous members of the Office of Quarant uh, War Crimes, most notably Orion Moreno. Apparently, Marshal Aquamarine found Johnson somewhere in the Mojave, and both of them worked together to uncover the evidence of enclave war criminals hiding in their past. Due to the seniority, many of these war criminals ended up in senior positions in our army and their past period under mountain of lies until now. Punishment them will certainly affect our combat effectiveness. We must do so if we want to remain true to the Reparations Act mission. What are we at with this? None of this here. Um, punish them? I'm sorry, Orion. Oh, we could use that one, but... Oh, well. Ex Executive Oversight. During the days in the rig, the Enclave ruled absolutely. There was no check and balance on the President's authority. Even the pre-war USA was guilty of such sins, of course. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Perhaps it's no surprise that the Enclave turned out as we know them. In order to prevent a repeat of the situation, the Calhoun Commission suggested forming an independent oversight body to act as a check on the power of the government. Shockingly, we realized that we never thought about oversight against executive overreach until now. Perhaps we should form a standing committee, or oversight committee, under Congress as a check and balances. An external oversight NGO run by former Calhoun Commission members could also help as a second line of defense against another President Richardson. Create it. I would personally go against it, but create it. Might as well make Congress do something outside beside uh, be a rubber stamp office. Hey, look at that. Fraggies. Still coring more stuff, which is fine. Still get 1.66 split of fire every day. 35%. Um, That's better than it was, but not as good as what it used to be, of course, but still. Ah, oh, gotta get rid of them. Fun the EPA. Yeah. I'll probably get that and then get rid of it. <laughs> What's this? Oh, we get this one. Let's see, we get this one. Please go ahead. Emergency labor draft. Yeah, we get this one. Please go ahead, too. Department of Education. Um, inaugurate Congress, huh? Well, let's go with this one next. Colonel Two. Oh. Ah, Royas interventionist. Eh, eh. I'll go over here. Clayton Schultz. 
I like this one the most. Chief of Staffs. We still gotta fix that up stuff too. All good Murphy. Uh, armaments. Major Marches. Oh, the name Navarro. Look at that. Sword of Plowshares. Arke Ganon. Julie Farkas. The elite support Ruthless Capitalists. Compassionate Doctor, Attorney General, EPA. Well, we need this guy anyways. I just don't want to hurt our war support yet too much, you know? Or, I mean, consumer goods. Let's continue to build and expand upon Navarro. Certain disagreements cropped up among the branches that has caused such contention among the officer ranks leading the construction. It's, it threatens to delay everything. The central issue is to, who's going to take the lead on the base. Who will be the primary garrison? Who will be the uh, names reflect? And while we're all in agreement to keep the name Navarro, the Army still wants to call it a fort. The Navy, a base, and the Air Force and the Marines have chimed in as well. Thankfully, work is continuing on schedule for the time being, but it's only a matter of time before the officers start playing politics and screwing each other over and trying to gain a lead. For granted, who was normal above such matters, being that he was the President of the United States, so Navarro's importance in American history is too significant. He's not going to let a petty squabble over name and conventions ruin its reconstruction during one heated debate among the officers that was meant to settle the matter. Granite walked in <clears throat> uh, among the officers that was meant to settle the matter. Uh, and it, much to the alarm of every officer in the room, though since they were all at attention, the room was silent. Grant looked over them and spoke calmly the decision. Fine as is. Joint Base Navarro. Fort Navarro. Camp Navarro. Navarro. When you say the word Navarro, you know what it means. There is no favoritism with the word or place of Navarro. At least not here. I got some bombs, good. Good, good. Officer Reform Corps. Spin and polished that crisp salute, that ability to launch a pincer into enemy's positions. Our officers are good as any West Point turned out. Basic training reform. Now that our officer corps is the envy of the wasteland, we should reform our or reform our enlisted branch to be soldiers, not thugs in power armor. Oh, we have the cabal already created. Oh, you know what? Let me know in the comments below. What would be a better name than the cabal for the uh, enclave reconstruction authority? No, the United States. Let me know. Should it be the CIA? Should it be the FBI? Should it be uh, the IRS? Which I don't like, but you know, let's not talk about politics here. You know. Um... Oh, hello. Uh, turn at the end. It that sucks. Cool. Are we not making any money again? Okay. New arena just makes us a crap ton of money. So good. Because we should basically have zero dollars. There we go. Oh, we have thirty-eight dollars. I'll take that. Back to basics. After the Great War, much of the remains of the U.S. military were the elite team stationed in the key installations, and whatever remnants were scrapped up along the way over time. Uh, these elite individuals formed the core of the enclave military for the next two hundred years. Of course, times a way of changing things as those elites grew old and a new generation was born. The new generation trained by the veterans elite, and the next generation generation as follows. Well, this system worked well for the small force that was the enclave. Well, as our army grows to several thousands, if not millions, men and women, we need change. Pre-war the branches consolidated training under the Army's training and doctrine command. And many of its records are still intact to see our Army Depot and elsewhere. What's more, we have veterans experience in waste and warfare that can easily form the cadre needed to restart old Tradoc and bring forth the next generation of the U.S. military. Let's get to work. Former Star Command dedicated training developing soldiers for the battlefields of today, tomorrow, and of course, beyond. Um, flight school. Clean the skies. Specialist training. Oh, you really skimp is good to have a good one oh, next immediately. Gonna burn the buckaroos. Nevada officers, home is Nevada. Nevada Academy. Pentagon were born. There you go. What the flip? Thunderbirds.
Countdown. Oh. Oh god. So you guys are mentally just fighting against it, which is fine. I don't think these guys are gonna win against the Thunderbirds. So gonna put us kinda of in a pickle though, in all honesty. This American army, do you at least have anything that's good? Also explosives. This is not turning out well for us now. And though we've had like literally no war for this episode, it is what it is. It happens sometimes. Auto laser rifles. Uh, SMGs, Tesla cannons, miniguns. Actually, you know what? Still ahead of time they are. Dang it. Trapper's compact, huh? Oh, they're gonna be fighting. Oh, they, that's gonna take some time for them. The American Times, the backbone of the American Army's power armor, from this anchor of reclamation of the Battle of Shanghai to the Siege of Navarro. American soldiers lived, breathed, and died in power armor. And the wasteland were power armors that were most worn by raider bosses or paladins. It would be the Americans who walk among the wastes as titans themselves. Alright, Mexican engineering. Uh, maritime draft. Zero laboratory. I want to put a power right now. We found something. There's a little bit of stability here. Super moons might once have been dangerous, but their numbers have been dwindling for decades. Plenty of them are brutes beyond reasoning, but some of them are rumored to be thinking and feel just as a regular human being. If they're willing to join us, we can use their formidable strength to rebuild America. Yeah, Thunderbirds are doing. Ah, uh, they're doing okay. Just from a wide area, this place you're ahead. We need that war support, so. And these guys are 20 to combo with, which is perfect for us. Good. Buy another, make more. Um, riders, you can also have dogs on you. Not even rights. Followers and traders speak of a strange race of sentient raccoons that live in an underground burrow on the edge of the jackal territory. We've accepted everyone else and given them human rights. What's one more race? Even if they're not human. Who cares, right? Nice. Max planning plus 50% is extraordinarily strong. Nice. Because I do want to start at Lost Hills. NCR's political gridlock and schema prevented them from being able to... Oh. Um... Bringing Venom them from being able to deliver the set strike needed and lost cells. We, on the other hand, are completely capable of it. Nice. I'm trying to build, 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 my boys. Good, look at all that. Beautiful. Yes, we have enough energy here. We still have 480 burrows. We're getting reports out of interior Nevada of a strange colony of small fury mutants. We dispatched a vertebrate for a flyover with what the pilots reported. That was what it looked like pre war raccoons with a mismatch of travel and ballistic weaponry, though they didn't shoot at the vertebrate. Uh, they didn't work too happy about us being over them. And a bottle caps. It's a testament to our economic prowess that the comparison that comes no longer relies on bottle caps. You know what? Every 20 days, it's going to take some time. That's right. Ooh, can I get a coonskin hat? Just like Ben Franklin. Oh, welcome to the United States of America. Oh, that's easy. That's the easiest one. To, that's the easiest way to do it. They're actually doing well here now. What the heck? Well, alright. 
whatever. Steel backbone, huh? Free of bottle caps. Bottle caps were an ingenious solution to the voice on its problems. Now, how do you create a currency with no government? The original bottle caps were backed by a potable water from the hub, and because the bottle caps not, could not be replicated, and forceful conditions had a fixed store of value. But as the West Sun's economy grew, the limited supply of bottle caps meant more goods were chasing less money, discouraging economic growth. With the return of glory to the West, the government can also impose a rational currency worth whatever the government says it's worth. Wait, this isn't this why candy bar costs a thousand dollars for the war? Is that right? Don't question things, you know? Oh my god, that's terrible. Oh, uh, because they're trying to strike lost sales, that's why. Hey, gold marriage is done, thank god. We don't like gold marriage on this channel. Shnikes. Oh, they just... No, oh, that's fine, whatever. I'm gonna kill them all first here. Do we have any more planes around to make... Oh, yes we do. Yeah, well, these guys need it too. Go in, boys. See what you can do. So it's different than what I've used to. Usually they take up all this where my mouse is, but then they don't take over maximum meters. So that's why I pulled my guys back just a little bit. Because so I didn't know what to, how to react to them. You know? Stomps? Oh, yes, please, money. Let's cash money, man. Capture Lost House Bunker. Uh, seemed deemed it impenetrable. Others deemed the conquest of it too bloody to be attempted. However, both initially seemed to have been proven wrong after a single day of somewhat underwhelming fighting. The United States troops began their attack in the early hours of the morning. It was a tough bloody fight. Nearly every member of the bunker had given it a gun in an attempt to fight out the invaders. Elders, scribes, and paladins working together to give their lives for what mattered. In the end, the Lost Hills were snuffed out, and the corpse was left bare for the United States to pick over. Expelling the Brotherhood from the Lost Hills was worth the cost. Absolutely. Hey. Destruction of Mount Rushmore, we're going to that place good head. Elko Posse. Oh, God. I'm going to kill these guys off. We have to. Um, American Broadcasting Department. Lots of stuff going down in post apocalyptia these days. Uh, here's some of the latest news Department of Education, a staggered amount of assistance are illiterate. We're open to public schools to provide at least the basic skills to anyone under 12 years of age and brotherhood leadership. Is the brother to see all legitimate descendants of the United States Army went astray or power armor uh, criminals with access to some stolen technology? The opinions differ. Sierra Labs, the restoration and expansion of the Sierra Army Depot Research Labs have, or facilities made them the envy of the wasteland. Um, <clears throat> labs, and rattling our facilities on the rig. Our son is now working in a clean, safe, and secure environment with some of the most advanced systems in the known world. The question of what to do with them remains an issue. Some are. Uh, some say we should open up a new research and development prime with their project expanded capabilities. Others say we should could be using systems in the projects already going on. Set aside for additional projects. Use the eyes for current projects. Another is a slap because seven's not enough, you know? It's just not. How do you know that? Because I say so. Um, but I think I might end it there. Maybe with brother soldiers, even if we don't honor the brother's history, many of the soldiers would prefer to serve in the U.S. Army rather than serve in the Reconstruction Battalion. But if you enjoyed the video, though, please consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. As I'll see you what else we can do with the United States and probably go to War with Legion then. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.